you know, and I categorize our Reverend Dr. Tuisem Shishak as the first class people who thinks idea, who has a vision. Uh, in fact, I call him uh, a man of uh, thinking, a thinking man. Uh, <clears throat> I know him for many, many years, and we worked together for 28 years at Parkai uh, Christian College. I also call him a man of uh, discipline, uh, who value time, he care his health, and also is very, very meticulous in handling finance money. I'll give you an example. When I was here as a public relations officer, I'm a person who go and ask back money for the college. So much so that if there is a money that comes to Pat Kai, he will go come to my place and give the money at night. And I say, Reverend Twisem Shishak, I call him Twisem. Twisem, why can't you give me tomorrow in the office? Eh? Who knows if I die tonight? Nobody will know this money. So I said, supposing if I die too, what, what will happen? No, no. At least you are responsible of handling money, so God will forgive. You know, such a person, very, very clean in handling money. Why I say this? Because there are so many corruption these days, young people. Why our state, our country is not growing? Because people doesn't know how to handle money, who doesn't have no transparency. And so I just wanted to say something about him. He is also a man of family. You know, he loves Margaret Shishak very much, his children and now grandchildren. Dr. Tuzem Shishak is also a man of God who put everything God first. If I visit, if I happen to visit him, the thing is, don't go, let's pray. Any problem, start with prayer. Uh, I learned a lot of things from him. So God first. Uh, that's what he is. He has a vision. And therefore, that vision, the ideas, talking about vision. When we started this Margaret Shisha School of Music, the day we... <clears throat> groundbreaking ceremony. You know what he said? <coughs> Excuse me. I hear the choir already singing here. That's the kind of vision. That's the kind of idea that they have. And now we can see with our own naked eyes. That kind of visionary person he is. So I'm sure, Patkain, you are fortunate to be here. You let us emulate from him, learn from him, and he's a man who thinks and who put action. Okay? Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, the creator of heavens and earth and sustainer of our faith. This morning we are gathered together in this auditorium to praise you, to honor you, and to worship you. We are here to have Twisem A. Shisha annual lecture. Pray, Lord, for Dr. Visokuno Hibo, Principal Zafu Christian College, as she delivers, that all of us will be blessed. Bear with her, O God, anoint her with a special from above. As a student, as a lecturer, as an alumni, all those who are gathered together in this auditorium, Father, give all of us open heart and open mind to this eh, what is good for us and for this college because this college was built upon in the name of jesus christ and for his glory thank you lord we pray for the whole session today in jesus name amen A very good morning to everyone present here. The Tuism A. Shishak Annual Lecture was instituted in 2022 
in recognition of our founder principle, his impactful and lasting contribution to the society at large as a visionary educationist, academic activist, and an eminent intellectual. Through this platform, the college strives to continue to take his vision forward by dialogically engaging with personalities from various fields. As the college celebrates its existence of 50 years this year, the theme, Dare to Dream, Patkai Christian College and the Future is apt in setting the tone to stimulate our thoughts and to forge our vision for the future as one of the leading institutions in the region. Our most respected Principal Emeritus, Reverend Dr. Twissam A. Shishak, our speaker, Professor Visakono Hibo, Principal, Japhur Christian College, Reverend Candid Sario, former PRO, Patkai Christian College, our Principal, Dr. Tepeville Pere, our Vice Principal, Dr. Peseye, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty and staff of Patkai Christian College, faculty and staff of Patkai Higher Secondary School, alumni, students, and friends. I take this privilege to stand here on this auspicious occasion of the Golden Jubilee edition of the Twisam A. Shishak Annual Lecture to extend a warm welcome to each one of you. On this occasion, we, the Batkai community, together with the Alumni Association, Batkai Christian College, would like to express our gratitude and love to our Principal Emeritus and Reverend Candid Serio with a token for which I request the two of them to stand on their feet as they receive it from our principal. Thank you, Principal, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm highly honored to introduce to you our speaker for today's event, Dr. Uh, Professor Visakono Hibo, the principal of Japha Christian College, who is a distinguished academician par excellence. Professor Hibo has made an impeccable contribution in varied fields from academic to social life at the state and national levels. She was the president of all Nagaland College Principals Association for two terms, a peer team member of the National Accreditation and Assessment Council, NAC, member selection committee of Child, State Child Protection Society, consultant for State Commission for Women, subject expert in Nagaland Public Service Commission and allied departments under the government of Nagaland. As an avid researcher, Professor Hibo has immense research experience in UGC funded and other government funded research projects resulting into numerous publications. Ma'am, we are so immensely uh, humbled that you are here with us today. And as our college prepares itself to embark on a new journey, as it hits its milestone, the glorious 50 years, we look forward to have an engaging experience with you today. As a gesture of our gratitude, we have a small token for you, ma'am, 
and I request you to come up to the stage to receive it from our principal. Thank you, sir. And now, ma'am, you may take the podium. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I'm not a very long speaker because maybe I'm yet to reach sir's level. And I hope uh, God gives me also the privilege to grow as old as you, as gracefully as every one of you. Good morning to every one of you. 1974, having moved to the campus, the living conditions were quite primitive. So much so that a few prospective students and lecturers were scared away. This line is an excerpt from the book titled The Shishaks in page 77. It speaks volumes about the Shishaks and all the pioneers of Patkaya Christian College who deserves our greatest respect, gratitude, and appreciation. Most respected Reverend Dr. Tia Shishak, Principal Emeritus PCC, the Principal Dr. Tefavile Piero, the Vice Principal, Mr. Peseye, Reverend Candid, esteemed dignitaries, Brother Lanu, it's a dear, so surprised to see him here this morning, staff, faculty, alumni, and students of Patkai Christian College Autonomous, and I believe even the higher secondary is here. Thank you so much for giving me the honor to deliver the Golden Jubilee edition of the prestigious Tewsam A. Shishak Annual Lecture in the presence of the living legend of PCC, not a mobile legend, mind you, students, <laughs> a living legend. On the topic, Dare to Dream, Patkai Christian College and the Future. I was thinking if I were to use this there too much in my maybe short presentation, it may lo look a little rude, but somebody said that there is a very good encouragement for those who wish to grow. So allow me to use this word lavishly as I go on with my lecture. Honestly, I find myself quite inadequate to present this lecture because I do only Bosti Manu raw organic talks. So I am feeling quite small actually, but as I look at you, I'm also getting encouraged and motivated. So I do seek your apology beforehand. 2024, Patkai Christian Autonomous is the only college in Nagaland where multi crores with its thousand acres of prime private land. These questions that keeps on coming to me, somehow I also started evaluating your land also. Excuse me, sir, but I'm not a Marxist, but that's how I did it. I actually got in touch with the real estate, estate and I let him roughly evaluate your land. I will not tell you on which, uh, what was the bar then, but he said it's a multi crore college and no college in Nagaland is as rich as Patkai. If it's an individual, he or she, if they have owned Patkai, would be an Ambani in Naglen. So you can just see the privilege that you're having, studying, working, and also living as community, as families, as alumni, as teachers, retired teachers, present teachers, staff and faculty in Patkai Christian College. UGC insists 
only on minimum two acres of land for colleges located in urban areas and five acres for colleges located in rural areas. My college is very small. I hardly have 15 acres of land. But one thing which you don't have is I have very good water flowing from the mountains. That is the only thing that I can boast. Our college is very small. Now with secondary being uh, shifted to the higher secondaries, now we hardly have five, 600 in between students. It's a semi-residential college. So with you, with the school and the college all put together with a massive land, actually the potential of your future is just, uh, I mean, we cannot comprehend how much it can grow. So this extraordinary wealth of PCC in the form of immovable landed property should be explored to the fullest without exploiting its large green patches or deep-seated spiritual values following its motto, light and truth. PCC definitely is already a prestigious institute of higher learning, but has potential to reach a very high level, way above the rest of the other higher educational institutes in the Northeast region and even India the nation at large. As it is, Patkai has the freedom to design its own curriculum without restrictions. I think this is something which you can take it to your advantage the most. Some of us, whenever we want to in include any skill or any value based into our curriculum, we have to go through a long process. We have to go through the academic uh, council of the university which is held maybe two times in a year, and so it takes time. It takes even two or sometimes three years. I, our college also had included, I think, uh, three skill-based classes and one, one value-based uh, syllabi into the curriculum, so it took a long time. So I just envy your freedom that you, and also the things that you can do because you have this freedom, curriculum, planning, and design. You can do a lot of things, especially under the new NEP 2020. Unlike other colleges, those of us who are affiliated under Nagaland University, you truly have the best advantage. Because everything, when the curriculum is planned and designed properly, then the college cannot fail. That's what I feel. When sincere teachers are there, qualified teachers are there, when loyal office staff are there, I think, there is no stopping for Patkai to grow. And with the commencement, as I've said, of the National Education Policy 2020, the possibility of merging your land and its resources into your curriculum has just already improved, uh, just have been opened. You can merge your curriculum with your land, which none others have. I think you can think of those possibilities now. Implementation of NEP 2020 with skill enhancement courses has already improved the institutional liveliness in many institutions in Nagaland, even now. Even in a small college, we have introduced the Naga traditional cuisine. So you will see both boys and girls cooking very heavily for one semester. We have organic gardening, we have so many things, beekeeping, I mean, it's endless. So we choose, we choose to guard it, and of course the computer, the E, because in this 21st century, even for you Gen Zs, unless you know computers, you will be considered as illiterate. So classes can become very boring, especially if you are not too much into IT, but unless you push yourself on that, then our graduates will become more and more unemployable. That is something which we, as a small college, are also trying to do. And so two semesters, we're being able to put a computer syllabi into the uh, syllabi of the Nagaland University, for which we are also uh, congratulating ourselves in these small, uh, I mean, uh, steps that we have taken to make our students employable. But for Patkai Christian College, nobody can stop you. I think this is something which is, uh, I feel that's something where you can be most excited about. Now, 
for too long are Naga students. Why is science and Hindi and even this uh, mathematics have been so like difficult for us is because we have not been maybe made to understand it in such a way that it is related to the plants that you're touching, you're growing, or it is related to the number of stones that you're playing uh, with, even as a tribal, okay? So many of us, especially in my generation, we are, toys were just stones, sticks, and sometimes mud, and all those corn cobs to make our dolls, okay? So those things are so much like science, those things are mathematics, those things are so natural, but yet we have not been able to incorporate what we have been taught in the classrooms to how we live at home and with our surroundings. Now that system, we need to face it out. And that has made, been making even our college goers, our students, unemployable graduates. Now we need to also enable our students to be job ready. It may be big jobs, small jobs, whatever it is. As long as we have integrity, as long as we have honesty, as long as we have this, the will to work, I think the dignity of men will never fall. Big or small jobs doesn't matter. Government or private doesn't matter. I think every one of us carry the same amount of stomach, though some of us are more heavier. But I think we can, when it comes to basic life, uh, livelihood, it's not, if God gives us good health, I think it's not a big deal. It's only when we become greedy and start amassing things and become, I think, vying for others, coveting others like others, then I think that's where we all go wrong. If not, I think we can all be dignified human beings and the crux of how to be, I think, needs to start from the school and most importantly, as adults in the colleges, that is very important to me. So for too long, we have been ignorantly letting students earn their degrees via road system or the memorizing culture with archaic syllabi, which had no relevance to real life situations or help assist in livelihood intervention skills. Some students are very good in rote learning, memorizing. They can memorize five, six, seven pages, and they will be able to write as good as they had memorized. When, when we tell them to explain, blank. In their own words, it's blank. I think we as colleges, we have also been teaching our students wrongly in this, and we need to slowly start shifting and I'm excited about NEP 2020 with all the problems or challenges or whatever it is being associated with. I'm excited because this will be faced 50% of it at least. Because skill now is being emphasized, value courses are being now emphasized. So many things, so many pos possibilities have been opened. The, before the NEP 2020 classes, we're very boring, if I were to imagine. Now with two years of NEP 2020, uh, as it is the six semesters, the last batch is also there, but somehow campuses have become alive. So we need to have the right designs of syllabus. We need to choose those skill courses which will actually have real, uh, I mean, which will actually aid and help assist students to soar forward. If not, just to get marks, just to, get an easy syllabi, I think it's not going to help them. We need to sweat it out, we need to, I mean, even we as faculty, we need to uh, sort, of, sort of walk the extra mile so that our students may be benefited. And students also should not look out for easy uh, type of education, but should study in such a way that it is able to equip you, it is able to make you job ready, or even to be life ready even as you venture out to be adults. If not, if we look at our Naga society, and even the Nagas, when I say it, including Nagas in Arunachal, Nagas in Manipur, Nagas everywhere, in Assam, in Myanmar, everywhere. I think many of us, because our features also don't allow us to grow old that suddenly, we can continue to be like, uh, no longer a sweet 16, but uh, I mean, we can have that uh, young looking image. So, I mean, that can also psychologically affect us 
negatively or adversely. We don't grow as per our age. We don't mature as per our age. And this is why I think we continue to be like so dependent on our parents, even when we continue to reach our maybe late 20s or even 30s or up. Surprising that some can even be as childish as any young teenager boy, uh, like even in their 40s. So I think these are things that we need to change and the colleges can help change that gear. The syllabus needs to meet the societal, economic and ecological challenges facing our world today. Given the human and natural resources at the disposal of this institution, Patkai Christian College, can become a leading institute spearheading quality education, research, and innovations. As it is, autonomous colleges can have a lot of freedom even when it comes to research. When it comes to applying for funding resources, you have much more freedom than those who come under affiliated colleges or those who are in the government uh, under higher education directly. Uh, under the government. So I think these are things that you can also take advantage. To scale new heights in research and development, the faculty, staff, and students need to work in tandem. I have also, like in my small situation, I have also seen that when some teachers are into research, sometimes they neglect their classes. Or those teachers, please forgive me, I'm not trying to target anyone here, who have just given up on research or who have just given up on achieving anything, or paper writing or attending a seminar, somehow they become liabilities for the college in the long run. So whether we need to balance our life in such a way that teaching, research, innovation, and everything, I think, needs to go hand in hand. We need to balance it. If not, you neglect one part, UGC says when you don't do research, what do you get for you to go and say authoritatively to your students? You will be just mimicking only what they're getting it in their YouTubes and in their uh, Wikipedia and even in their Google. Professor Google, Google is there to help you, isn't it? So even assignments, that way for even students also. As you are as smart as Anyone in the world with your mobile phones or with the, your internet connectivity, so also your teachers are also gearing up to meet that challenge. What some of my teachers also does is, as soon as they give an assignment to the students, they will go to all the popular Google sites and they will go and check on Wikipedia and then their assignments, they will, as soon as they get the teachers, I mean, students' assignments, they will say that, oh, you got it from this side, you got it from this side. Why don't you do something original? Because when originality only comes, then it will make us to be thinking beings. Only when we start thinking, like our Riven Candid was mentioning about our uh, principal emeritus here, only when we start thinking, I think, then we can also start taking good decisions for ourselves. We can start getting serious even with our lessons. We can start getting serious it, even with the lessons that we're teaching, imparting, and also the lessons that we're learning. It is a comprehensive, altogether, uh, I mean, connected entity when it comes to higher education. So faculty, staff, and students need to work in tandem. I would particularly like to encourage the faculty members to spare their precious time to research and writing so as not to only improve the college ranking, but also contribute to the body of knowledge that is important to improve the condition of our society. Uh, this, I think it was just maybe three, four weeks back, I, will, I, I also came for the last day of that strategic planning of Patakari Christian College, the program. So from what I have also seen, you're doing so much more than what we are doing as a little college up there in Jeffrey Christian College. But I also see that uh, maybe we have only one fourth of your teacher's number when it comes to that. But when I compared the research, uh, I mean the volume, I think our college is doing, not everybody, but I think our college is doing much more when it comes to research and 
like writing papers, all of this, and like making themselves uh, like sort of uncomfortable, sacrificing their holidays, sacrificing their weekends to pursue higher education, especially through research and innovation. I think we might be a little more than you, so you can just wake up and then maybe overtake us because your number is much more. So that is what we need to also, I'm, because I'm part of the governing, governing body also, I'm just being very honest here this morning. Please forgive me. Now the NEP 2020 and even the NAC assessment reforms are now talking about the uniqueness and situatedness. So this uniqueness and situatedness, you have the advantage with all that Kropatika land that it, you're sitting on top. This uniqueness and situatedness, I think it is going to be incorporated under the new uh, NAC reforms also. Because so far what NEC has been doing is they will have a yardstick and they will go and measure any education institutions that are there in Delhi or maybe there in Ukrul or that, that may be there in uh, Jaffa Christian College in uh, Kiguema or maybe here in Patkai like that. So sometimes it just doesn't, like the logic does not really work because what is applicable for them may not be applicable for us. What is applicable for us may not be applicable for them. So I think the new reforms are going to be accommodating this, uh, uh, the hills and the plains and also the tribal or even mainland. I mean, these are the things that they're going to take uh, into consideration. So I look forward to the new things that are coming. We will go through a lot of struggles, I know, in bibing new things that comes away frequently, but. This is how we grow also. Even under the, the new NEP, how much stress and shakings the educational institutions in the country, the whole country is going through. Starting from the classroom to, I mean, making new syllabus, syllabi and all so many things. In biping skill, all, everything is included. So this uniqueness and situatedness of individual institutions, rather than using a uniform national yardstick for measuring the quality of education is coming away. Higher education institutes are now to strive for holistic and multidisciplinary nature of education. My husband teaches uh, education, so I know that what is education? Education is an all-round development of the individual and the self. Uh, I mean, that's so good, but has any uh, institution or has any teacher been able to like be really satisfied when they like sort of uh, assess their alumni or even the college at large. I think this is something which we have been lacking because we have just been teaching in the class theoretically for so many long decades after decades. We have not been imparting values as we should be except for uh, colleges like Patkai. I know you have your Bible classes. You have. Then also we also have some other sources like that, except for a few colleges, just go teach what is Max Weber, what is Karl Marx, what is Aldous Combe, I'm from sociology, uh, forgive me, but Aristotle, all those who have just been studying theory. And our students have just been memorizing those theories and then replicating it in their answer script and getting very good marks. So I think this is shifting and you are the fortunate batches. All those of you who have come to uh, like sort of get included into this new NEP 2020. I think uh, NEP 2020, which is sometimes known as National Education Policy 2020, or sometimes very uh, like aptly it just comes to my mouth, uh, to our mouths as NEP 2020, New Education Policy 2020. So we are to now strive for holistic and multidisciplinary nature of education. We have been forced under the new NEP to become more holistic and then to be multidisciplinary. All PhD courses or even the undergraduate courses or even, even the MA, the postgraduate, the postgraduate dissertations. We need to have that multidisciplinary approach in our mind even when we attempt to come up with any research topic or come up with any research dissertation topics. One of my sociology MA students wrote on beekeeping. Then somebody said, how can a sociology student write on beekeeping? Isn't that 
outside of her purview, then she cleverly did men, bees, flowers, trees, and the environment. I said, what is there? This is so much part of sociological studies. Who says that sociology is only to be confined to interactions and interrelations? Why not we interrelate ourselves with the environment? Why not we interrelate ourselves with climate change? Why not we interrelate ourselves with all these, the global village aspects that are changing the landscape of human beings day by day? So we need to aggressively pursue holistic and multidisciplinary nature of education. Because only then we will to reach higher levels of, I think, becoming the epitome of how people look up to Patkai. I think we need to rise up higher. Now, nobody can reach Chakriba because you are, as it is sitting on the gold mine, as I've been uh, repeating, and an internalized legacy of Christian values have been imparted by those of our legends who are uh, sitting here. The Christian values, many a time students may find it to be just elders, uh, uh, these elders, they always think, talk about Christian values, they always talk about all of this, but as you continue to keep on hearing for three years, five years, what happens is it gets into your system and we like sort of internalize the system. And as soon as you decide to become a better human being, those are the things that you will start valuing. So it is already there in place. So I dare you to dream of developing a college where students can work and earn while they learn. This is something where we go, uh, this is something very impressive, especially those colleges which are actually doing it very seri seriously and not just to impress the NAC peer team members. You can actually develop a college where students can work and earn while they learn. I dare you to establish an institutional eco and cultural tourism, even with a traditional archive, within your huge campus, sir, where students are taught hands-on on tourism safari etiquettes and also how to generate revenue for themselves and the college at large. The teachers and all those who go out will know. Sometimes we go to other countries and they will take us to a safari. Like, they will take us from these jeeps or small, uh, these, uh, whatever, some, sometimes small trains, and then we will just see trees and here and there some uh, good slogans uh, to do with environment, preserving their environment. And then we pay huge money. You are here, you already have one. So I think you can also, like, that way you can also impart skill to our students, be able to generate money for the college, and also, I think, many will be inspired to do those because we have huge potential in ecotourism and cultural tourism. Whereas our land, if we look at the map, it is not too big. Therefore, big industries, mega industries, all those may not come in too early. And also with so many other factors that affects us as a society. So these are things that we can do. Tourism sector is one of the most viable environment uh, employment avenues in Northeast region. We did a Northeast workshop and then even for other, except for Assam, almost all the other Northeastern states also said tourism is the only avenue where employment uh, can be generated by the government and also by entrepreneurs and even by a single individual. In the absence of giant industries and mega services sector, I think we need to seriously ponder on this. We need to combat the horror of producing unemployable graduates. It's not that in Jaffa Christian College we have all employable graduates. It is not that. It is not that we don't have any employable graduates. It is not that also. That is the story for all the colleges in Nagaland and even maybe in the Northeast. Patkai Christian College is the only college where students can adopt and own an organic banana tree each for self-consumption and also for sale. I dare you to grow one or adopt one and ripen it naturally. People will just run for organic banana. Okay, so I think this is something that you can do. In our small uh, campus, 
We have an organic gardening club. I look after them. So winter, they grow, they grow broccoli. Our staff are here. They are the potential buyers. They buy it also. Hmm. Then uh, in this summer, we grow this king chili. And they to sustain. Sometimes they go for small treats give themselves. Sometimes they use it in their tours. Sometimes they use it to pay their uh, photocopies, their rocks materials. So this is something when they start doing it, they also like enjoy a lot and at the same time it benefits them. For you, for us, we can just grow two, three broccolis at a time. For you, you can have big, big, I think you can adopt or grow huge banana trees, right? I've seen that in your former principals and our former principals uh, uh, residents. PCC is the only college where students in bulk can offer crush courses in piano, voice, guitar, and drums to children of neighboring residents of Chumukedima, Sitekema, Sovima, Virazuma, and many other villages and towns surrounding you for a fee after class. PCC is the only college that can luxuriously open futsal, football, volleyball, and cricket grounds for its students, and maybe even commercialize it to generate income during your holidays. As I believe it has sufficient non-teaching manpower in its payroll, and maybe even those immediate graduates, the alumni can also come and like be part of this venture even when they're waiting for jobs. Plus, if a coaching center, a civil service coaching center can be placed here and a dorm or sort of things are accommodated, all this can be, I think, clap up together. I think uh, many of you will have better ideas. I'm just throwing it like a villager. Please forgive me. I've seen tomatoes ripening like a bed of roses in Patkai. Believe me, I saw it in Auntie Alole's garden. It was like... Did you throw it here on the, on, in your garden? No, it is all attached to the vines, okay? So, I, I mean, it was such a surprising and pleasant sight for me to see so much of tomatoes being able to grow very healthily, organically in Patkai. Many rooms of healthy piglets in PCC I have seen. That also in there. Residents at their backyard. So many piglets. It was like a choir of piglets. But they were not singing, they were bit, beatboxing. <laughs> the potential of PCC is endless. The landscape of higher education is rapidly changing. Earlier, what happened was, the NEC assessment was uh, ass assessing colleges under seven criteria. One is curricular aspect. Number two is teaching, learning, and evaluation. Three is research, innovation, and extension. Four is infrastructure and learning resources. Five is student support and progression. Six is governance and leadership. And seven is institutional values and best practices. Seven criteria. Now, the landscape of higher education is truly changing because now NEC is trying to get feedbacks from stakeholders, from the colleges, from the universities. In stakeholders' consultation for NEC reforms 2024, a proposed high-level structure is being projected, wherein they will leave some, they will add some, they will take more. I think this is that's just the initial period. But wherein it is projected as an institution of repute must necessarily have a robust curriculum design. Faculty resources, qualified faculty and the resources, infrastructure, financial resources and management, quality learning and teaching processes. And when it comes to teaching, now we're talking about peer teaching, we're talking about group discussion, we're talking about tutorial, we're not just talking about PPT and class lecture, no. All those included, but it's going beyond that. Extended curricular engagements, governance and administration, student outcome, research and innovation outcomes, sustainability outcomes, including green initiatives and uniqueness and situatedness. That is coming again in under NEC. So it's going to be a huge advantage for you, Patkayans. 
I'm confident that PCC, being a trailblazer, has much of this in place, already in place you have. Therefore, it must soon develop into a university of repute and serve great societies with its alumni who are equipped with Christian skills and quality education. But Craig Christian College is a pillar for other smaller Christian institutions, especially for us, like our college. Therefore, may you continue to lead with light and truth. This is what I came to share you, uh, to share with you today. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am, for engaging the audience with your substantive, informative, challenging, and uh, very insightful talk on the topic, Dare to Dream, Batkai Christian College and the Future. Once again, uh, we welcome you warmly to the interactive uh, session, which we will start right away. And uh, we are again looking forward to have a very fruitful session. Um, dear Batkayans, we are so privileged to have with us an eminent woman of letters, well-seasoned uh, academician and an able uh, administrator, as you have heard before also, who has uh, contributed and still is continuing to contribute to the world of economics, uh, sorry, academics, and also the society at large in uh, so many uh, capacities with her unwavering zeal to strive for excellence. Apart from all this, since I know ma'am personally, I want to add a personal note that uh, ma'am is also a very humble person, generous, she is a great homemaker, and also she is an excellent chef. We will now proceed with the interactive session, which will be for 15 minutes. Um, the floor is now open to the audience for the interaction uh, with our speaker, ma'am. But before we start that, a few points uh, as reminder. Uh, questions can be either uh, verbal or uh, written. Sir Chris Ale will be around to um, collect the written uh, questions. You can hand it over to him. For the verbal questions, kindly uh, take the microphone in the front. And for, yes, for the written uh, questions, hand it over to Sir Chris Ali. Uh, also, one more reminder, please keep the questions short. Um, there is a fallacy that only, uh, it is a fallacy that when we uh, speak in high sounding language, that is something grand. But as we have heard from our ma'am this morning also, her language was able to reach out to everybody in the uh, audience. And so therefore, please keep the questions simple, short, straightforward, and clear. Also, uh, comments um, on the talk is also uh, welcome. So you may please, uh, the first one who wants to take the opportunity, please uh, take. So I just want to ask, um, oh, hello, uh, <laughs> um, with the theme, um, Dare to Dream, and especially my father-in-law, such an um, amazing visionary, and you also have shared such wonderful visions, um, but f um, how, what would you say, um, how do you go from your dreams to the practical, making it happen? Do you have any suggestions or key things that can take us from vision to reality? Okay. Uh, I always have this, uh, maybe I will do with an example. I always have this thought that 
Naga traditional cuisines are so sustainable, it is environmental friendly, and at the same time, it is uh, low cost and healthy because we don't use so much of oil, all of this. So I wanted to do a research. And so thankfully, UGC approved one big research for us. So teachers and staff, we traveled to the various districts of Nagaland, and then we did that research for three years, Naga traditional cuisine, uh, biodiversity, climate change, and food security. It was uh, a comprehensive one. And after that, once it was done and it was proven to be something which once my hypothesis has been like sort of proven, we made a very simple syllabus and we presented it to Nagaland University, University especially with this, under this skill enhancement course, SEC. So it got approved and now we have already finished a batch and so this we will continue. So that's something how I do it. I don't know whether I have answered your question or not. So also when it comes to adopting a banana tree, for example, by every student, for example, I was saying, it can, like you can inculcate it into your value courses, your syllabi, or you can inculcate it in your skill enhancement course so that you don't need to do a separate thing uh, because we don't get much time also. Anything which we're doing so much, I think we should inco uh, like sort of, uh, include it in our syllabi so that the educational, uh, the learner and the thought also are able to walk at a relaxed pace, have time to think, work. So that's how it is. I don't know whether I've been able to answer your question correctly. Thank you. Okay, as we wait for the students to um, frame your questions, uh, even me, I have a question, ma'am. Mm, the words, uh, words like multi uh, college, Ambani in Nagaland, gold mine, uh, I think it, has, it is really challenging for uh, our college, and uh, if not for the others, I have you know, never thought of our college from this uh, point of view. So uh, my question is, um, since you have already ex have, have experience of the NEP 2020 and all based on that, and also with the real estate kind of uh, uh, research that you did, uh, can you just give us maybe some secrets from your research or anything on how can we at least prepare on the surface level to achieve uh, this, what we have in our possession, maybe what which we are not really aware of. Okay, uh, what I'm imagining and what I know students would like uh, would like to ha would love to have is, do you enjoy futsal? Do you want to have a high five futsal ground in Patkai? We may not always have the money ready, but we can always collaborate with uh, like-minded or people who, have, who share the same faith and values with us. For example, when I was imagining Patkai, even this, uh, our brother Hoto also was coming to my mind like that, no? So, I mean, uh, things can be worked out and I think this can also let enjoy, uh, allow the students to enjoy, but at the same time, can also help earn some revenue for the college. It may not be located close by the college, uh, to the administrative setup or to the classrooms like that, but we have so much of land and there are some peripheries where we see not too many greens are also there. I think those can be like sort of uh, maybe you can dream of those. And one thing which was, I didn't include that, but I was thinking maybe why not Patkai also came up with a, come up with a very big water harvest uh, maybe project and maybe you can use it and some you can even like supply to neighboring towns. I was, but those are too big. Uh, I mean, those were coming to my mind. I didn't put it in my write-up, but I, I, sometimes uh, we think of the impossible and even when we don't have a paisa, but sometimes when we keep on thinking, thinking, 
uh, like somehow opportunities comes away. That's what I have also experienced. Little things uh, up there in a humble college that is also there. But uh, the land is something which is of uh, prime importance and you have it. And without land, you cannot do too many ambitious things where big spaces are, re are like required. I think those are the areas that you can also concentrate on. And of course, the students should have the benefit of using it, but I think it can also be used to also earn some good money. That's what I felt. Mm. The, uh, I have seen uh, one institution in uh, Chiang Mai, Thailand, where they literally have a bullet card. It's an elite college. They have a bullet card, they have a field, and so not just the students studying there, but even outsiders, they can go for these summer camps, this, that, and then learn hands-on on the traditional method of farming of the Thais. I think these are things that we can also dream of doing. And you have so much of fruits, horti, flori, even flori culture. Look at the uh, bogen villas that are already like, smiling and laughing in your campus. These are things that you can also make maximum use, even, I mean, everywhere. I think these are things that can this uh, nature's God's way of uh, like sort of rewarding us in the environment that we are placed in. So I think you can do a lot when you have land. That's what I feel. We don't have land. We have just 15 acres of land. Uh, we also have uh, planted a thousand plus trees where already four, five hundred fruit trees are already fruiting. Plums, peaches, all of those. Pears, all of those. Then we have some indigenous uh, fruit trees also. So students are allowed to go and pluck, but they're not allowed to pack it and go. We do such things. So it keeps the campus alive and keeps you healthy. It provides you your vitamin C. I think if you have lots of bananas and the potential of green bananas are here, you, then your potassium level, I think, will never go down. Um, hi, my name is Sope. I teach uh, mass communication. Um, I was just wondering, I, um, I heard you speak about issues related to rote learning. And you were saying the new NEP will resolve issues with uh, rote learning. Was, I was just curious, how does NEP address this issue? Okay, uh we have in every structure maybe a little very sure but out the uh, that uh, what that hi-fi whatever academia language but at the same time originality when this is emphasized and this is coming i'm excited with this new nep 2020 so many will be angry with me when i say that because <laughs> so many other challenges are attached to this have i answered your question thank you Uh, even uh, the minor, earlier if somebody is taking history honors, they have to take either pole science or maybe uh, sociology or all those things as a lesson to a huge. Yeah, those who want to uh, raise question, you may raise your hand high. And those who want to uh, present your question on a paper, you can also do the same. Uh, hello. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Uh, so, when I heard you say that Patkai was once held as a high status, in today's time, it is sad to say, but Patkai is in today's generation, Patkai is slowly degrading. And you, as the principal, can you give us a few tips on how we can come back to our prime days? Okay, uh, I was just narrating a history of my one of my uh, the senior teachers. So even from those days, Patkai has been held in high esteem. Even now also, we are looking up to you in high esteem, so don't go. <laughs> don't try to lessen your uh, degree, your ranking by yourself. Uh, 
uh, one thing which we can do is, uh, I know even when it comes to neck assessment, from A it has fallen to B, all those are there, but like I said, reforms are happening and the individual advantage of colleges are going to be, I think, considered under the new neck reforms. So, Patkai, instead of falling, it will go higher. So don't worry about that. You have very capable teachers. We have values already set in. You are the Ambani's of, <laughs> I think, uh, higher educational institutes when we compare you with others. People hardly have your luxury that you have. So you have, as students, you can also cooperate with your teachers and as teachers and stakeholders, maybe we can also go for more aggressive hands-on skills. And those can the college. I it can also do. We need not go for very high tech and all of this. It costs a lot of money, but I think every one of us can benefit ourselves by doing something that can help sustain us even when we go away from the college. So I think ideas are limitless. You can explore on it. And don't worry, Patkai is still held in high esteem and it will continue to do so. Don't worry. Prayers are with you. You are praying and also you have very capable uh, uh, these teachers, the principal also, and even governing bodies also. I'm also one of them. Though I don't contribute much, I have also have missed two meetings. <laughs> okay, ma'am, uh, let me just ask you this question. Uh, as you are also aware that uh, the, the college, uh, we, we are in the jubilee year this year, having achieved, um, having uh, attained these 50 years now. So uh, having reached this milestone of 50 years, what do you think uh, sh should, the, I mean, the, the college should be where we are? I mean, the, you know, do you think that the college should be, you know, in a way that we, sh we have not yet achieved or attained? I mean, in the sense that uh, we do you think that uh, the college is fit enough to be, you know, uh, uh, to be in a state of a private university in the near future? Or do you think that uh, we are still lacking behind and we need to come up with certain things that we have not yet achieved? Uh, if you have any suggestions, I think that would be great for us as an institute. Uh, I was, I just talked briefly on how we're looking up to Patkai to become a university one day. With all this CUET coming away, I think there will be huge scope even for Patkai to affiliate colleges under it. That's what I feel also. But at the same time, uh, with the NEP coming in, I feel that if you can design your curriculum properly, and also like sort of do a little more better homework on the extracurricular activities and also maybe like make use of the resources that are already here because you have a rich legacy. Because of that, you have been able to reach 50 years of existence. That in Nagamis, we say it is not Mamuli. So congratulations to every one of you. And taking these cues, I wish like I also have included in my uh, speech a little bit, if we can change some gear and help utilize even maybe the, say, the, uh, the massive uh, ministerial staff that are there in productive ways and also maybe uh, the teachers can be pushed on research and innovative that area more and students be fed with uh, syllabi that are relevant to the present day, that are useful to the present day, because the ABC's academic bank critics are also coming away where you will not be excluded also. So all this, if we do a little more homework, Patkai can go a long way, and actually this NEP 2020, when I look at Patkai, the advantage is yours. That's what I feel. So 50 years have gone, not yet gone, this year you have reached 50 years. And for many years, I think you can look forward to more exciting, I think, uh, institutional life and institutional existence. But of course, the structure should be there, the system should be there, the function should be there. The idea and like uh, the, our lady had asked, 
the idea and the implementation needs to go hand in hand. Not at one go, because usually whenever we suggest anything, whenever we as principals or as administrators, we invite suggestions, lofty ideas will be given to us and which financially it may not be attainable at that moment, but ideas can be taken and we can slowly generate, but at the same time, whatever we can, within our capacity, I think we can start doing right now, I think those things can really keep the institutions very alive. And we also need to know the, uh, the kind of students we're dealing with now. Those days, they will just eat, sleep, come on time. But now I think we're also dealing with students who are so uh, good in this, the internet capabilities. Many of them will come sleepless and then maybe come to the classroom also if you like some of our students. I, I think those are things that we need to also, and maybe it needs, we need to, as teachers, we need to also look at ourselves and like examine our teaching methods. We need to even go hybrid to catch the attention of the younger generation. Those, you do some old notes, you come and read it, let them detect, I mean, copy as you detect. I think those doesn't work anymore. So I feel that education in the country and Nagaland in particular, it is becoming a little more better. That's what I feel. But for those who doesn't wish to like upscale themselves, they will have a hard time and it will be a miserable, miserable time. But uh, I think IT should be taught even to the staff and faculty particularly. Uh, and sometimes I'm, Sometimes I'm so much of a Hitler in my college. Sometimes what I do is I compel every teacher to at least take some PPT class, some tutorial class, some, all those assignments, all those, okay? Even my former teacher will know, but that's how it is. And I feel that it is beneficial, not just for students, but for us also. Because if we are to be in educational institutes, even me, 50 plus, I need to keep on updating myself because knowledge is endless. So learning is, it will only end only when we breathe our last. So learning is a lifelong process. So that's where it is. I think you have a bright future ahead of you. Not because I'm here as a guest, but I truly look at you and I see the potential. Very, the other day when I was in your strategic meeting, I could see a lot of potential in the young teachers especially and those, uh, Senior teachers also have so much of commitment and conviction and the will to improve. When we have that, I think we cannot go too wrong. And with our Christian principles, I think, and with our leaders to guide us, I think we can look forward to a very lively campus with the coming of NEP 2020. That's what I feel. I don't know whether I've been able to answer your query. Thank you. Okay, I have uh, a question here, a written question through this uh, piece of paper. I don't know who gave the question, but I'll just present the question. The question says, the new education policy has made master degree for just one year course. What quality education of master degree can one get with just a year course? Okay, this is in line with four year UGP program. Um, uh, so it is like this, not everybody can jump into the four-year degree course. If any department, be it history or be it education or whatsoever, if they wish to offer, and the whole college cannot jump into it at a go. So if they wish to offer this four-year UG course, they need to have not less than two PhDs and qualified other teachers. Because then, in the fourth year, research needs to be implemented in the fourth year. So that's how it is. If, even if you go to uh, one year, two years PG, methodologies will be there, then dissertation, all this will be there. So I think it needs the, it's like sharing the syllabus for the four, in the fourth year. And then if we are to go for one year PG, I think it is shared. 
But uh, this is what I feel also. UGC also is not yet so clear about coming up with that one year PG course. They're yet to come up with the structure or even proper syllabi. So that way, even for our state, I think it will take some time. But whichever subject needs to, uh, like, is interested in like covering up the fourth year, they need to have research in the fourth year and proper quality teachers needs to be there. Unless it is there, university will not allow. So in my college now, when I look at it, which are the subjects they can offer four-year UG? Uh, a four-year UG course is right now sociology because now three PhDs are there and the rest are all net. So, and that also like some are specialized in methodology. So I think those things count. So not everybody will just jump to the fourth year, even in an institution. But it will take some time. So I think because in the West, it is one year, right, PG? Some, some two years, some one year like that, but it is shared from the PG, uh, from the UG level, but with quality teachers in it. So even if we say four-year UG course, it's not going to come in a hurry. Done. Okay, I think uh, we are running out of time, so although uh, many may have questions to ask. We will put an end to our interactive session now and move on with the uh, next. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you very much, everyone. Annual Alumni Excellent Award is an, is an annual feature that is observed on Twisem Shishak Annual Lecture, which is also called SAL in short. This award is given to any graduate of Hatkai Christian College who have made a mark of themselves in any field of their calling. Not only that, they should be someone who look back at his alma mater with gratefulness in his heart. The award carry a citation with cash award, cash reward. The award of the year 2024 The award of the year 2024 goes to a graduate of 1998 batch. We have someone who has been in the Lord's ministry since his college days. There is no greater joy than being in the Lord's service. He was EU PCC vice president in 1995-96. Then he became EU president Patkai Christian College in 1996-97. He graduated in 1998. He joined UESI Student Volunteer Program, that is Mission Exposure, for nine months. 1999-2001, he completed his MA Philosophy from Nehu Shillong. 2001 to 2005, he completed his BD from Bishop's College, Calcutta. He has an impressive student's ministry record. 2005 to 2008, he served as UESI Northeast staff in charge of Tripura State and based in Agartala. 2008 and 10, served as UESI Northeast staff based in Mokokchung. 2009 to 11, he served as secretary, UESI Northeast Training Department. 2010 and 11, he served as UESI Northeast staff based in Kohima. 2011 to 16, he served as 
State Secretary of UESI Nagaland based in Kohima. 2016 till date, is serving as Zonal Secretary of UESI Northeast Zone based in Shillong. He is married to La Larin Thari from Aizol and together they have two sons. After his graduation, he has returned to Patkai on numerous occasions as EU speaker, resource persons, etc., with his family. We have here Mr. A. Lanutsudir as the recipient of 2024 Patkai Alumni Excellence Award. I would like I would like to call upon Sir Reverend Twisem A. Shishak to hand over the award to Mr. Lanu Sudir. May I also call Mr. Lanu A. Sudir to receive the award. As I stand here, first of all, I want to thank our Almighty God. If I'm standing here and receiving the Patkai Alumni Award, it's because of God's grace and favor. And also, I want to thank the association, Alumni Association, Patkai Christian College, for this uh, great honor and the award uh, showered on me. And nonetheless, I really want to thank God for a visionary leader like our principal emeritus, Reverend Dr. Twisim A. Shishak, who has not only established the College for Academic Excellence, but also a college based on biblical principles. And the very fact that to have the spiritual ministry and also have established the EU ministry here, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's 1975 in the month of September. And also we have a hostel, prayer fellowships, and so many other activities are there. And we have college paper, the Bible subject. These are some of the very fact that shows that the principal, our principal emeritus has the, had the vision to establish the college based on biblical foundations, values. As I stand here, I recollect my student days, standing here often as uh, one of the EU committee member. And I will never forget, this is the college who has really equipped me and trained me, even before I went for my theological training. Theological studies training is more or less it's, uh, all theoretical studies. But the real practical experience, the training I got is from this college. And that is what has made me to be what I am in the ministry, the Union of Evangelical Students of India that I'm involved in right now. So I really want to thank God 
for the privilege God has given to me that I am one of the uh, many privileged students who, who had come to Patkai and have acquired my degree and with lots of other experiences where God has prepared me for the upcoming ministry that God already knew as a sovereign God. I just recollect one incident as I stand here. When I was newly inducted as an EU vice president, the first time I was asked to come and lead in prayer, I was really scared. I was meditating on my own prayer, <laughs> what to pray, to stand here and to pray in a big crowd like this, which I had never done that. So I wrote my prayer. Very prayerfully, I wrote my prayer in a piece of paper. And that evening, I came here, standing here, and I said, Let, let's look to God in prayer. Let's all close our eyes. And when all the congregation closed their eyes, I quietly opened and I opened my eyes. <laughs> I opened a piece of paper and read my prayer. I was happy, satisfied. I think that is how we were trained, real practical in, in the spiritual ministry here. Every Sunday, the EU, as EU members, we were helping out, preparing the Holy Communion, preparing the hymn books, putting it on the pews and putting it back on the shelf again, and so on. And I am so privileged, even among the committee members, to have had three senior advisors. The first one of our senior advisors was uh, Miss Julia Anna Rubin, who is in Canada now, with whom I am still in touch, very much actively in touch now. And the second was, one was uh, Miss Pino Pese, who is now serving in referral hospital as a warden in nursing college there. And the third, of course, is our Miss Angel Sonari, who is seated here, right? Very glad to see you, Miss. Yeah. So we were mentored to the heights, to the top. And I remember Miss Angel used to bring milk for the EU committee when we were working late night during EU camps and all in the EU office, right there behind the chapel there, the small EU space. So that's how we were mentored. If I had not been here, studied here in this college, I don't know. If God has not transformed me, I don't know what would I have been. I accepted Christ in 1993, and that was the year I came here to this college, the right college, the right place for my spiritual growth, for my spiritual maturity. So I really thank God for this college and for a visionary leader like our Professor Emeritus, Dr. Reverend Dr. Twisa Meshisha. May God continue to bless you, sir, with many more long life. The intellectual community especially is so much, I think it's a great blessing for the intellectual community to have you around. So God bless you. Thank you so much once again. I give all glory and honor to God for whatever I've received. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. We are almost coming to the end of our program. As you can see in the program, we have a, a small refreshment, light refreshment. So as, uh, after the program, as you go, the, uh, the speaker the, and the invitees may kindly go behind the chapel for that uh, refreshment. And then the staff and faculties may go on my right side uh, that is prepared for you, the refreshment. And then the student body can walk out and as you go, you can move towards the left side of my hand and then you, uh, you can have your refreshment. There is something for everybody. Please don't take your, sh uh, please take your share and go. Thank you. Allow me to say the closing prayer for our time here. Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this time that you've given us. We praise you and thank you for this event and your purpose for it. And as we come to the end of our time here, we're grateful for the opportunity that you've given us as a community to come together and to share in this meaningful 
presentation and engaging conversations. We thank you for the wisdoms, um, the insights, the perspectives um, that our speaker shared with us. We pray that you would enable us to, um, to, to go forward with all that we have learned from this place. And we want to thank you for guiding us through this event with your purposeful hand. We pray that you would give us wisdom, guide us, um, to use the knowledge and the insights that we have gained from this event um, to bring a positive um, uh, change in our life and in our community. We ask you uh, for your blessings and your guidance as we depart from here. May your presence go with us and be with us in all of our endeavors. We pray for your strength to sustain us. We pray for your power to uh, preserve us. We pray for your hand to protect us. And we pray that your way would direct us and that your love would go with us even into the rest of the day and for the rest of the week as well. We offer this prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen.